I don't know any parent who doesn't believe that they would do anything they had to do for their child, especially if they were ill. So here's the situation for you to consider out there. Your child has a life-threatening disease. They desperately need a bone marrow transplant. You can't find one anyone else. You know no one who's a match. Well, you're about to meet one family who was faced with that dilemma 17 years ago back in 1991. The Ayala family, you may remember them. They came up with a situation, a solution, that was seen as controversial, and it touched off a national debate. Anissa Ayala was just 16 when diagnosed with leukemia. Not sure she'd live to graduate from high school. Her only hope, a bone marrow transplant from a donor. She made public pleas to find a match. It's hard for me to get up here and ask my friends for help. But after an unsuccessful year of treatment and searching, Anissa's parents took a big gamble. Her father had a 14-year-old vasectomy reversed, then both parents in their 40s conceived a child, hoping the baby would save her big sister's life. We really didn't find out that she was a match till I was about six months pregnant. It was like Christmas. I mean, it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. I couldn't believe that, that she matched perfectly. But the birth of baby Marissa brought not only tears of joy, but also sharp criticism from some who questioned the ethics of having one child to save another. When you have a, a little child who's going to be a donor of, a, of an organ like bone marrow, you have a sense that the child is being created for that purpose and really doesn't participate in that choice. There were a lot of people that were, you know, criticizing us. And you know, at that point, you feel like your child, you, truly, your child is dying. Well, we felt that it was none of their business because it was a family uh, decision. At 14 months old, little Marissa gave her sister her life back, and a successful bone marrow transplant created a bond deeper than blood. Today, for the entire Ayala family, it's proof they made the right decision. She's a piece of me. She's my heart and my soul. It's a beautiful story, and who are we joined by now? No one else but the Ayala sisters, Anissa, now 36, and Marissa, 18. You look the same. <laughs> this story, a lifetime ago for you, right? Because it was the beginning of your life. But tell me, how present is this special bond in your lives even today, Anissa? I think it absolutely lends to our relationship. I think our relationship is special in itself as sisters. But at the same time, I think going through this experience um, is something that has created that bond also. Now, of course, you weren't even born when this was happening, but you were living through it as a teenager, the criticism, the questions about the controversy. What did it mean to you then? To me? Yeah, because you were in the womb. <laughs> it's unfair to ask you. I, you know, it was just really difficult for my parents at the time. I think that having another child was something that I was really, really excited about. It gave me something to live for, to be a big sister. Um, and it just, it's really brought so much joy to our lives. She's such a beautiful girl and she's such a beautiful person. And you were saying it gave your parents like a second life. It made them Absolutely. young again because they had a little one to take care of. Right, trying to keep up with her. <laughs> so now the bond is clear, right? You always can tell when says, you even sit the same way. Look at the hands, <laughs> see the hands of sisters. Now for you growing up, Marissa, with this awareness of a little bit of your life story, mm -hmm. how did you handle that as you got older? Um, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's because, like, I'm pretty much immune to, like, everything. Like, the whole story, my friends knowing, my classmates knowing, everyone knowing. So, I really don't know, like, because I've, I've grown up with it my whole life. So, I'm just used to it. But, I like, I don't really like talking about it. And a lot of people know that. But I know now that it's a, look, well, I've always known. But I know it's a positive story. And I know it gives people hope so that's the only reason why I talk about it. You don't like talking about it because there was controversy and you want to be who you are for yeah. yourself and yeah. not defined as a story. Yeah I want to be me you know like that's not my whole life and it's a part of me but I want to be defined as myself. And yet as a younger sibling myself do you feel that you have a little bit of extra leverage on your sister just a little bit <laughs> if you want something from her closet or you want her to do something she says no do you ever give her like a little bit of a look like hey and <laughs> it's me here. <laughs> yeah, no, not really, because, I don't know, we're just normal sisters, even though, yes, I gave her a second chance at life. Um, we're just normal sisters. I never think about it at all. We're, 
But you must, though, right? Being the older sibling, knowing the significance of it. And by the way, when this happened, even at that young age, as a teenager, you said, if this works, if this happens, right. I will give back. This will right. change me, not just physically. Absolutely. Today, I work with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I really feel it's my mission to give back and to make a difference in people's lives. And that's really important to me. And I think with all of the research that's been funded, it's given hope to patients that who are going through transplant, who have different options now other than transplant and different things like that. So for me, it's important to work in this field and to see the amazing, the amazing different options it gives patients as time goes by. And as unique as your situation is, I mean, you know, when, when you're trying to figure out how to look at a story, you try to consider the both sides. Well, there was controversy because this is about morality, but really your family, bottom line, got a second child to love and Absolutely. now your best friend, right? Exactly. So now there's She's a little great. bit. We have a little bit of a twist here this morning. You said you were going to give back. You think you know everything about your sister, right? You're very, very close. But what does your sister not know about you, Anissa, and what your plans are? My sister doesn't know that I really would love to honor you, baby, in some way. And I thought the best way is because you've given me that second chance at life that I really would like, because of the research that has been done, I'm here, and I think the research needs to continue. So I am kicking off something, and I'm kicking off a research grant to be funded that's gonna be called the Marissa Eve Ayala Research Grant with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I'm kicking it off with a $10,000 contribution. I'm hoping to raise $100,000, and I'm hoping everyone will join me in that, and, but it's going to be in honor of her. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story, and it's a beautiful mission. It, it is, and I hope people join our mission, please, so they can log on to the website to help us. Absolutely. We'll give you the information at abcnews.com. Anissa, Marissa, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. And congratulations. You're helping people in name once again. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Holding hands. I love to see sisters holding hands. <laughs> In a flash, be the first to know what's coming up on Good Morning America tomorrow with the GMA Daily Flash email. All the great insider details you want to know from GMA. Go to abcnews.com, click the GMA page, and sign up for the Daily Flash. And you can even enter to win the weekly GMA Flash gift bag giveaway. Sign up now.